the tension and chiropractic. We're going to talk about that. And as I move along in this show, we're going to spin this into taking care, better care of your own children right now at home, practical, easy things that you can do to improve your children's health right now. We're going to back up a little bit and I'm going to talk about juvenile detention and chiropractic. I have a document here from 1931. 1931. And this is a report from the state of Kentucky. So what the state of Kentucky chiropractic uh, president, we'll, we'll call him, if you will, uh, state supervisor of chiropractors in Kentucky, uh, Dr. Marshall, he started off in this report, he wrote a letter to the members of the Kentucky State Board uh, and Corrections. Okay, So the correctional facility, if you will, for juveniles in Kentucky, 1931. Okay. So I'm going to take a minute, I'm going to read a little bit in the letter because there's some gems buried in here. We're going to talk about what they did for the kids, how they helped them in this facility. We're going to talk about the money saved and then we're going to talk about your children and then maybe what we could do in juvenile detention centers around the country right now, present day. Gentlemen, for a number of years the chiropractic profession has made claims that there was a very important and very necessary work to be done in the state penal and charitable institutions, which could be done only by those skilled in the science and practice of chiropractic. So they were saying back even in 1931, hey, we as chiropractors, we can really help these kids get better. Claims have been made that hundreds of thousands of dollars could be saved by the state annually and hundreds of the inmates in these institutions could be rehabilitated to the extent that they could return to their homes and loved ones and would cease to be wards of the state and instead follow me, become useful, producing, healthy, and law-abiding citizens. Isn't that what we all want? They want that. They want to be home with their loved ones. We want that because we want to save money and see these people healthier and better and, and generally good uh, citizens of the Commonwealth and so forth, right? The state supervisor of chiropractors was given permission to enter the Kentucky Houses of Reform, of Reform by the Board of Charities and Corrections, September 1st of 1930. So this is when the, if you will, experiment started. September 1st of 1930, 90 years ago. On September 3rd of 1930 to December 31st, December 1st of 1931, we treated 244 kids. So 244 boys ages 10 to 20 were taken care of by these chiropractors. And they were taken care of uh, for a year and three months, okay? We have submitted a complete report uh, and uh, to all the officers and teachers. Each quarterly report has been submitted to all of the officers and teachers who were in daily contact with these boys and were asked to check any or all cases and make a statement if the report was correct and accurate or not. So it just wasn't the chiropractor saying this. Anyone involved with the care of these kids and young adults were involved in assessing the information that was going on when they added chiropractic care for these kids in juvenile detention. As a result, each and every report bears the signature of all officers and teachers stating that they have examined and checked these reports and have found same to be accurate and correct. We've been able to accomplish results far beyond the fondest hopes and expectation in the rehabilitation of these boys. Again, this is 1930-1931. The teachers have voluntarily and without solicitation signed a petition asking for an all-time or full-time chiropractor in that institution. Now keep in mind this was only one institution, one building in the state of Kentucky, in one state, in one small period of time. As to the results of, uh, obtained, I submit a detailed report of each of these cases, which speaks for itself. I'm going to give you some cases in a moment. In this report, I show the age, symptoms, uh, time, patient started treatment, and progress made and results obtained in the three months until dismissal. So it sounds like each child was worked on with chiropractic care for three months and then dismissed from care. I desire to express uh, your attention to the improvement in the school work and the behavior. So it's not just these physical complaints with these kids that were getting better. It was the school performance and conduct, overall behavior. 
The physical condition of a boy is very largely responsible for his conduct and ability to advance in schoolwork. Doesn't that sound like that statement written in 1931 could easily be applied to ADD and ADHD and learning disabilities and so forth right now? Again, the physical condition of a boy or girl is very largely responsible for his conduct, his or her conduct, and ability to advance in schoolwork. You will notice that 54 of our patients have promote, prom, been promoted in grades and almost, follow this now, of the 244 kids treated, and almost 100% have shown improvements in conduct or behavior, if you will, okay? We're almost done with the letter and then I'll move on. Paroles of these kids are based, based largely upon conduct, and you will notice 144 of the 244 kids have been paroled since we have been giving them chiropractic treatment. Okay? It costs the state about $25 per month, probably a little bit more than that now, <laughs> to keep a boy in the Kentucky Houses of Reform, and at that rate, 144 boys would cost the state $43,000 annually. This savings could be increased very materially, or I might say by several times the above amount at some of our larger institutions, keeping in mind this was only one place in one state. As shown by this report, this institution is only one in the state and shows a decrease in the number of inmates during the past year. And it's the only state penal institution in the country so far as I can ascertain that shows a decrease over any period in the last 10 years. They were the only one that showed that Kids were actually being paroled and let go, and they, and they weren't coming back. The numbers actually got better. And listen to this statement. This actually is in bold in this print here. It is much easier to decrease the expenses of our state penal and charitable institutions than to raise revenue taxes for them. It's much easier to decrease the expenses than to raise taxes. That's a pretty awesome statement in 1931. So the problems stay about the same, don't they? 54% of the kids of the 244 improved their grade. They went up in grade. 100% of them improved their conduct with chiropractic care. 144 of 244 of these kids were paroled. And it was the only center that actually saw a decrease in the numbers over time. The rest of this report goes into all of the cases. So I can flip over any page in here and I can write uh, case number 70, an 18 year old had frequent frontal headaches, soreness in neck, neuritis in arms and wrists, conduct was fair. Okay, uh, report number one, report number two, results completely recovered, paroled. Another one, a 17 year old, stomach trouble, constant headache. Schoolwork poor, conduct fair. Results a few months later, paroled. Next, underweight, pains in chest, schoolwork poor, conduct bad, and nervousness. During treatment, chiropractic treatment that is, was promoted from the fifth, fifth to the sixth grade, dismissed on 1931, completely recovered. And on and on it goes. Uh, here's another 15-year-old, schoolwork poor, conduct fair, three months later, paroled with no, re no results in this case, so some of them did not have results. Here's another one, a 15-year-old, slow in schoolwork, conduct fair, dismissed with a decided improvement in schoolwork, conduct also improved. And on and on the examples go, backache, leg aches in a 14-year-old, conduct fair, schoolwork poor. Uh, results a few months later, backache entirely re relieved, conduct improved, dismissed, completely recovered. And you can see the symptoms in these kids. Uh, nocturnal enuresis, or bedwetting, was a very common one through here. You see a lot of these kids had that problem, which in many of them went away. Soreness in neck and backs, headaches, pains in stomach, another common complaint that these kids had. Um, Nervousness, conduct, fair, another uh, nocturnal enuresis, frequent urination, stomach trouble, tonsillitis, headaches, poor conduct, uh, underweight, uh, bad language skills, anemia, backache, uh, pains through the colon, stomach trouble, lack of me uh, mental alertness, and the symptoms go on and on. Here's another case, stomach trouble entirely relieved with chiropractic care, dismissed, paroled. 
another case with pains in arms and legs, with schoolwork fair, dismissed with all symptoms entirely relieved. I wonder if we could get a bunch of chiropractors in a bunch of juvenile detention centers right now in the United States here in 2018, what we could offer these kids, how we could help them, if we can show in 1930 and 1931 a plethora of physical and mental symptoms getting corrected with chiropractic care. What could we do for these kids? And then we talked about a little bit about the money. Well, back in 1931 dollars, it was about $43,000. If you just plug that in into what it is today's dollars, that's that's $700,000. $700,000 in one year, in one institution, one building, in one state extrapolate that it could be millions of dollars if we just wanted to talk about money millions of dollars saved by just getting these kids chiropractic care and just for a moment i'm thinking about finally the military is coming around the military now has directives that they're getting more and more chiropractic care for all of their active duty and retired military personnel because we have been able to show over the course of many years of study that chiropractic has been able to relieve a lot of pain and help a lot of these uh, soldiers and, and retired military people. So they're expanding chiropractic. And I'm thinking about that for the juvenile detention centers. Well, what can you do for your child or your children right now? So let's expand that into what you can do for all kids. Think about uh, the report I just said in 1930 and 1931. The only thing that they administered was chiropractic care. Well, imagine with all of the, the information and science that we know now, we know how the human brain works. We know what it needs, right? It needs electrical stimulation from the special nerve endings in the spine. That's how chiropractic works. Chiropractic is stimulating those very powerful mechanoreceptors, which I've talked about many, many times. Those beds of nerve endings are firing into the nervous system and brain, allowing those brain circuits to grow. Great. That's the chiropractic end of things. So we can add that. But what if we cleaned up their, these kids' diets? got them away from processed foods and into real foods, really clean diets with organic vegetables and so forth. Imagine what that can do. We've already determined that clean diets or the Mediterranean diet is better than psychotropic medications for depression and anxiety and so forth. So then we clean up the diet along with chiropractic care. And now we know that there are brain-based supplements that work really well. How about omega-3 fish oil? How about some antioxidants? Maybe some probiotics for the gut where the immune system mostly lives and we improve that. Maybe we get some vitamin D in them. Maybe we get some magnesium. Maybe we add some supplements along with the chiropractic care. And then we get kids off of all of those drinks that are out there, all of the soda and the diet soda is gone and we replace that and make sure that they're all fully hydrated. Do you think that that could help them and your children? So we add water and getting rid of the other garbage along with the chiropractic. Imagine if we get them exercising and moving their bodies. Well, we know that moving the bodies on a regular basis stimulates all the nerve endings in the joints and in the muscles and in the tendons firing that rich information to the brain, allowing those brain circuits to grow. Imagine if we do that in all schools for all kids and you replace some of the electronics with moving their bodies. Let's make sure that these kids are on a sleep schedule where they're going to bed early enough and they're getting enough rest in a conjunction with the chiropractic care. And we have them thinking better. Maybe we invite in speakers and uh, educators that are going to come in and let them know that this is their universe. This is their supercomputer. They can get what they want out of life if they focus on it. And we have people coming in teaching these concepts to them on a regular basis. We do that for your kids. We do that in school systems. We do that in juvenile detention centers. Just imagine what we could do. The thing is, is these things don't cost very much. As a matter of fact, it could save millions of multi-millions of dollars uh, from, from taxes if we do these for these kids. So that's what I'm suggesting to you. Not only adding this into juvenile detention centers, but doing this for your children as well. I'm Dr. Scott Fuller. Thanks for joining me.